Hello everyone. Today I thought I would talk about the food bank a little bit. This is something that some of our schools do fundraising for or collect food for. And I thought I would just show you something. Food banks always begin with uh, farmers. Farmers grow the food. And uh, O'Gorman High School students have been helping harvest food for the food bank for some time. So we're going to go take a look. I thought I'd show you this tractor though because when I was a kid I loved to draw tractors and farms and barns and everything else. Isn't this a beautiful tractor? Very nice. Maybe you want to draw a tractor. I wonder what color you'd make it. So I thought I would show you now the food that I'm picking up for the food bank today. Those are squashes. Those are some, the yellow ones are spaghetti squash. I can't remember what the orange ones are called now. Are they Bartlett's? What do they call them? Anyways, there's squashes and then we've got potatoes. Most of these are red potatoes with a few yellow potatoes in there as well. Each of these potatoes, my friends, was harvested by an O'Gorman High School student. An O'Gorman High School student put their hand on each of these potatoes. That's going to go to the food bank and feed lots of people. This, by the way, is called a bushel basket. And Jesus talks about bushel baskets. At one point he says, why do you don't hide your light if you we all have a light in us he goes uh, you don't light a lamp and stick it under a bushel basket you you let your light shine for everyone in the house and so here my friends is a bushel basket and each of these baskets is holding about 50 pounds of food so we've got 50 pounds of potatoes here 50 pounds of potatoes here and 50 pounds of squash there how many pounds does that add up to there's a math question so I've loaded the potatoes and the squash into the into my van, along with uh, some other food that O'Gorman students were, were raising uh, before Christmas. And uh, I should have told you, they didn't harvest the potatoes this week. It's minus 30 today, so it's too cold to get potatoes out of the ground. But they harvested these potatoes back in September when it was plus 20 and the breeze was blowing and the birds were laughing and singing and uh, everybody was happy in t-shirts with gloves on just picking potatoes but it's a different day now with minus 30 but here we go we'll go in the food bank so my friends here's the storeroom for the food bank this is where food gets stored and organized so that we uh, that there's an understanding of how old how long food has been in storage look at all this cereal do you like cereal in the morning for breakfast there's cheerios and rice krispies Raisin Bran, look at all that cereal. And there's canned goods in there, canned tomatoes, and some rice and other goods there. And it just goes here. There's more food there. And it's all very carefully labeled and organized so that food is constantly moving to the people who need it. It's not sitting on shelves for very long. And this looks like a lot of food, but my friends, they go through three truckloads of food a week. That's how much they're giving away to people in Timmins. Three truckloads a week. And so this quickly can uh, empty. So donations are constantly required at the food bank. So my friends, this is where the Lord's Kitchen normally was before COVID. This is where students would serve food to people. Now it's become a place where food is handed out. I thought I would show you this. This is food that babies would like to eat, eh? Baby food. Do you remember eating baby food when you were little? I don't really remember. These here are bags filled with bread. These are bags filled with canned food. And there's the potatoes, by the way, that I just brought in now. And here are bags where people can uh, bring home meat for their fridge. And so that is something they will load tomorrow. And there is the potatoes that I brought in last week. You can see what they do from the bushel basket is they put the potatoes in a smaller bag for, for a person or for a family. A family can take a couple of those bags and that's how it works. Let's go talk over there to Mr. Young. He volunteers here all the time. So here's this uh, food bank volunteer. Do you want to introduce yourself to the people? Yeah, I'm uh, Jim Young, volunteer at Timmins Food Bank. Okay. And I'll tell everybody right off the bat, 
I'm very proud to say I'm part of the Timmins Food Bank. Yeah. I'm very proud to say I'm from Timmins. Timmins is a very giving community and we can't do without them. All we're doing is giving out the stuff that they give us. And I'm very proud of that. Yes, and uh, I know that uh, there's other food banks, like there's one in Cochrane where we have a school at Aileen Wright. Right on. Yeah. And I've been at the food bank in Englehart as well, where we have a school called Holy Family. And so there seems to be a lot of volunteers to help these food banks. Does, does everyone who works at a food bank volunteer? Yes, or does do. anyone get paid like no. lots of money? No. <laughs> No, actually, it's a losing proposition when it comes to money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we don't do it for the money. We do it for the uh, just to help people. And, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like get up in the morning and do something good for somebody, and you're going to have a great day. Yes. It's and just the nature of the beast. That's right. Yeah. And so how long, how many years have you been volunteering at the food bank? Well, I retired in 2007. What were you working? What kind of job did I you have? I was working in the, the concentrator for Kid Creek. Okay, you were and a miner. I, well, I was I was in the reagent area of yeah. the concentrator, so I okay. worked in the milling part of it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I retired in 2007, and I, I've, been, I, I, I've been working say full time here since 2011. Right on. Now what's the foundation of this food bank? Where did it begin and who sort of started the whole thing? Uh, the food bank began back in 2007. Okay. And uh, uh, my brother, uh, Rick, and uh, Warren Holmes, who was ahead of Kid Creek, Yeah. Uh, they got together and they decided to do something in Father Les Costello's memory. Okay. Father Les Costello was on the last Stanley Cup winning team of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was a rookie. That's back in the day. That's back in the day. Uh, it was in black and white. Yeah. I'm just letting everybody know. Okay, next time they win it, if they ever do, it'll be color. Are there any Toronto Maple Leaf fans watching this video, by the way? <laughs> okay, all right. So Father Les Costello, though, he uh, was Father up Les here Costello, and did a lot okay, of work. Okay, he was up here, and he actually started the Flying Fathers. Okay. But, okay, I'll just backtrack one second here. Okay, uh, the Leafs won the Stanley Cup. He was a rookie. The following year, he found his calling. Okay. And he went into the priesthood. Okay. And and since that day, uh, well, since that day on, uh, uh, he was driven to help people and, uh, yeah, would do, do his thing. Do you think we could go look at the furniture section of your of the food bank oh, because that's definitely. that's an important part of this place yes okay it's one of okay. our it's it, it's where we generate cash yeah okay and, to buy uh, food uh, to buy food okay. yeah we get a lot of cash donations yes and we treat this place just like a just like a household yeah okay if it's on sale we'll buy it if it's not on sale we'll wait and the stores are really good to us and uh, like they know we're not going to play a full pin for anything yeah unless we really need it and yeah. but we don't need it that bad okay let's go take a look at the furniture thank okay. you okay you're welcome my friends i didn't want to say it in front of mr young mr jim young but uh the volunteers in that food bank uh, give so many hours of their time it's unbelievable and they never want any recognition uh, many of them are very shy, in fact, to sort of talk about how many hours they give or what they do. And it's a beautiful thing, and it's it's uh, it's not something that you necessarily meet every day. But I did want to, before we go into the furniture place here, I just wanted to mention that uh, regarding Mr. Jim there, because uh, he sort of lives out what I think Jesus was teaching when he talked about how to give of yourself and how to be charitable. He said, give so that you're right, give with your right hand so that your left hand doesn't know what it's doing. In other words, don't calculate what you're doing when you decide to be kind or, or to give of yourself. Just do it because it's, it's a beautiful thing. You're connecting to people, you're participating in the community under God and, and uh, just living amongst the people openly and freely and happily. So just, you give with your right hand so that your left hand doesn't even know what the right hand is doing. You're just giving. And that's what the people at the food bank, all these volunteers, that's what they do. It's really cool. Let's go see the food. Let's go see the furniture. So I just also thought I would show you, my friends, here's a picture of Father Les right there on the side of the Timmins food bank truck. It's sort of an interesting portrait of Father Les. He was always a mischievous and, and happy character. And he always, he didn't worry about what benefit was to him in order to give. He just gave. He didn't worry about personal prestige or getting something back in return. He just wanted to give. And that's why you see a halo here on top of his head. He was a mischievous and happy character who was also a very holy character. 
Look at that. They keep a Toronto Maple Leaf calendar in the in the food bank too, eh? For Father Les. But uh, here's furniture, and and uh, there's furniture going through this place all the time, my friends. And this is a place where, as you maybe heard Mr. Jim say, they can sell furniture here, and the money goes right to the food bank so that they can buy food. Because although they have a lot of donations, there are times when it is very difficult uh, to keep the food stock that they need. And so let's say they need to buy a box of peanut butter to give to families, then they can, they'll have some money to do that, right? There's an old clock right there. Look at that. Anyways, so this is it. And I guess the lesson that I'm taking away from all of this, my friends, is that volunteers, people who give of their time without being paid, uh, make a big difference in their community. And uh, it's really nice to know Jim Young there and his brother Rick. They've been doing this work at the food bank for a long time. And so um, I really uh, am glad to, that uh, we were able to get them in the video. Uh, he loves to speak with students and let them know what's going on around here. So Anyways, I wish you peace, my friends, and uh, I hope that you have a great day today. I think the lockdown might be ending. We might be getting back to school. Wouldn't that be exciting? But uh, in the meantime, stay warm and safe and uh, enjoy your time with your family at home. Peace to you, my friends.